Barbell deadlifts, barbell squats, overhead press, lat pull down, chest press. And when you're ready to stop, repeat. That's how we climb Olympia. When you push that extra rep, when you pull another set, when you lift that one last rep, you will climb the mountain and no one will forget. Bring on the build with the NASM Physique and Bodybuilding Coach Program. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I so I got a good message that I want to cover about cervical flexion or extension, so forward head. And this comes from Storm Bailey, and Storm says, Rick, can you please do a podcast covering cervical extension slash flexion and the imbalances associated? I've listened to every podcast from you, and I really appreciate the education. You'll notice in the old NASM textbook, they refer to the head jutting forward as cervical extension, which is what I've always assumed it was. Apparently, it's flexion now. If the deep cervical flexors concentrically cause cervical flexion, why would they be underactive? Hmm, this is such a fantastic question, Storm. So thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing it up. And I want to bring it up to everybody because I struggled with this for a while. When I was a young educator for NASM, I asked this question as well. And um, so a few of the old school colleagues that were there, they said, this is just what it's called when the head goes forward. And, uh, and when the head juts forward, you have to extend to look up. Well, that's true. That's true. But the head going forward, doesn't that mean that it's flexion? If my neck drops forward, doesn't and then my head has to look up isn't that dropping forward part flexion also and then there's some extension at the end and they go well that's just that's just called extension and i thought oh okay well I, I, if that's what it's called that's what it's called but i didn't like that answer either i felt like it was lacking i felt like it was partially true and partially ambiguous so let's talk for a moment about what this is. What is cervical flexion? What is cervical extension? And then we're going to put it together into the forward head, discuss that, and then some cues to help with the cervical flexion that you'll need, but also something else. All right, so here we go. Cervical flexion, the bending of the head forward towards the chest. So if you're watching on the YouTube channel, not just listening to the podcast, this is this was, uh, the cervical flexion. Ready? I'm dropping my chin to my sternum. That's flexion. But that's not what a forward head looks like. In fact, we're going to switch it and we say, here's cervical extension, bending the head backwards with the face looking up towards the sky. So if I'm here and I look up, that's cervical extension. So if I've got cervical extension, I'm looking up towards the ceiling here. All right, well, that's weird because that's not what a forward head is either. Well, this is what we're calling it now. We're calling it forward head, and that's what's called an NASM text, but sometimes it's referred to as a protracted head, and this is a combination, <coughs> excuse me, of cervical flexion at the lower vertebrae and cervical extension at the upper vertebrae. So, again, if you're watching on YouTube, this is what it looks like. I'm going to cervically flex and extend and that is the forward head position. And now that cervical flexion at the lower vertebrae also tend to go hand in hand with thoracic, thoracic flexion. So I have an increased kyphosis in my thoracic spine, and then I'm increasing my lordosis at my cervical spine. How? By flexing at the bottom and extending at the top, which when you have vertebra on top of vertebra on top of vertebra, seven cervical vertebrae, and then you've got the head on top of it, so then you have the actual extension of the head itself, it creates a, an extension. But it has to flex at the bottom more to get that extension to take place as much as it does at the top in order for the head to jut forward. So what are we saying here? The forward head, the protracted head, is really a combination 
of flexion down at the very, very bottom vertebrae, and then extension as you start to go up in order to increase the cervical lordosis. So now we have these deep cervical flexors. And what does the deep cervical flexor do? Well, it, it does what we refer to the opposite of the forward head. We call it the chin tuck position. So chin tuck isn't chin down to the sternum. That's cervical flexion for sure. But if you're looking from the side, it's almost like you're talking to somebody and, and they're going in for the kiss, but you don't want it. And you pull your head back. Or like somebody has a smelly hand and they put it in your face and you pull your head back. This, this is cervical flexion. It makes a, a little double chin or it does on me. Uh, so as you pull the head back, this, these are the deep cervical flexors. Do they flex the neck too? They do. But as you pull the lower vertebra into extension, as you pull it, so again, from the side, I'm going to look up towards the ceiling. That's cervical extension. And now I'm going to keep my head in this position and drop my neck forward. And that's a forward head. So I want to go into some extension in my thoracic spine and my lower vertebrae in my cervical spine. And then cervical flexion here. And that creates more of that neutral position or an upright tall posture position. So the cues that I give when I want somebody to activate those deep cervical flexors, the longest coli muscles in the neck that might do the pretend somebody's going in for a kiss and you don't want it, pull your head back or the smelly hand. Sometimes I'll pretend to lick my hand and put it towards their face and they're like, ooh, and I go that, that, that ooh face, ooh, ooh, and you retract your head back. That is gonna work those deep cervical flexors and help to keep your posture more upright. And that tends to be the posture that we look for when we call it good posture. You can overdo it. You don't walk around with a retracted head with uh, the double chins, nobody wants that. Um, but you're just trying to stay relatively neutral, ears aligned with the shoulders without the head jutting forward. So again, a combination of flexion and extension creates a forward head. So is it flexion or extension? That was the question we started asking. Which one is it? The answer is it is both of those. And because there's ambiguity to that, and I don't like the ambiguity, I love that Storm asked that question. So Storm, thank you so much for asking the question and giving me the opportunity to chat it out and just kind of talk about it and give that information to other people who may have come across it and been like, what the heck is this? I understand, like we just call it that, but then some other people start putting out content, including NASM. We put out content and it's different than what we said before. Why is it different? Is it did it change? Was it once cervical flexion, uh, uh, cervical extension, and now it's cervical flexion? No, it's just that we're trying to create some disambiguity, trying to clear some things up. And cervical extension did not answer the question because you could stay upright and then just look up towards the ceiling and that cervical extension. And you're like, why do people walk around with cervical extension? And it, And they don't, not like that. They don't. Nobody walks around like that unless they're talking about the sky is falling. So we try to clear some things up, but sometimes we it's not like we write in the textbook, this is how we cleared it up. The, we just change the information and and you, very astute, very astutely noticed it and ask the question. And for that, I want to say thank you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to provide some disambiguity to the rest of the listeners who follow the podcast. So I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Um, share the podcast. We want to see it grow in 2023. So share it with your fitness friends and family, uh, fitness adjacent, even your clients who are like, I'd like to know more about fitness. Be like, oh, I know this guy. And we have a bunch of podcasts on the NASM Podcast Network that I think you will enjoy. So check out all the podcasts that are associated with it. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. Keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.